which in turn yields the fact that the derivative of first of all the fact that any analytic function has derivatives of all orders and all the derivatives are also analytic functions and then we prove the, the Murira theorem which is a kind of converse to the uh, theorem of Cauchy uh, says that if you have a continuous function so that the integral of the function along every triangle in the domain vanishes then the function is analytic in fact the function has a primitive and therefore is analytic by what we had said earlier then what we had of course the Cauchy's estimates for the derivatives of an analytic function which in turn uh, gives you view is theorem that uh, an entire function which is bounded must be a constant and also the fundamental theorem of algebra saying that any complex polynomial has a zero must vanish at some point in the complex plane if you have a function analytic function whose derivative vanishes a function is a constant provided your uh, domain is connected but if you look at what we wrote the statement was this but the proof was for something else so we'll redo that now so there's a connection there so today we'll uh, look at more consequences of all this power series expansion and so on Cauchy's estimates etc say something about the zeros of an analytic function and uh, you'll also see that analytic functions are uh, rigid in some sense so uh, for example if a function vanishes it's in some small part of the domain uh, it vanishes identically what is the small part will make size in a subdomain for example if a disk if a function vanishes inside a disk in the domain the function must vanish identically on the domain in fact much stronger than this so so in particular, uh, for example, the, this is again in total contrast to the case of uh, uh, real valued smooth infinitely differentiable functions. I will make more comments on this when we come to that. So let us start with uh, two statements. Suppose f is analytic in omega, omega, okay, f is then
Вот. Each of these sets is both open and closed. Set of points where all the derivatives vanish, this is open and closed. And set of points where the function takes the value uh, at same as the value of uh, f at a fixed point there. See, they are both open and closed. So, in particular, if omega is connected, it will deduce something. Okay, so so essentially, the first result was proved yesterday, right? When we, I stated the result as if prime is zero identically, then uh, function is a constant. So it was proved yesterday. If you remember, uh, we looked at this set. Okay, E is Because by definition, when n is equal to 0, the function is f itself. So, don't include that. So, this is open and closed, was proved yesterday. It's closed because zeros of continuous functions are closed sets. So, the intersection of all uh, zero sets of each fn there. So, proved yesterday. So, let us try to prove the second one. Take z0 and look at all points where the function takes the same value as f of z0. It's again obviously closed because Again, by continuity, just a continuous fun function pulls back close sets to close sets. So you have a singleton set, f z naught. So if so, this set is closed. E or whatever you want to call it. To see that it is open, suppose take a point A in that set, we want to find a neighborhood of that point which is contained in E. Right, every point of E is an interior point, that's what you have to show. So, choose a disk around A. As an R is contained in the disk omega. So look at the disk. So this is A. So what do we have to show? We have to show that for every point in the disk, this holds, right? So you have A, so take any other point in the disk, 
look at the line segment joining the two points that is inside the disc of course because the disc is a convex head call this point as z so the line segment joining a and z is given by 1 minus t times a plus t times z right for t lying between 0 and 1 so this gives you all points in that segment okay so this so if z is in the disk um, so let us call it d okay that is in d then the line segment joining a and z is this <coughs> so let's define a function on interval 0 1 So we can, f is differentiable and of course this function is differentiable as a function of t. So we can differentiate phi respect to t. So what is uh, the derivative? Use the chain rule, right? Derivative of f at this point multiplied by the derivative with respect to t of this. So, f prime so if you differentiate this with respect to t so what do you get z minus a minus a so let me modify the second statement make this additional assumption that the derivative of f is 0 then for any z naught this is both open and closed okay so so what do we get now this is 0 so what is the conclusion you have a function defined on the interval 0, 1 with derivative 0. So that function must be a constant by mean value theorem, for example. Right? Therefore, phi is a constant on So phi is a constant, so for example, therefore phi of 0 equal to phi of 1. Okay. So what is phi of 0? It is f of a. Phi of 1 is f of z. But what was a? We started with a in E. That means f of a is equal to f of z naught. So this is f of z naught. 
So, what have we got now? So, at some point A, f of A is equal to f of z naught, then whole disk there f of z equal to f of z naught. So, which is what and by saying that the the whole disk is contained in E before E So, now if you assume that omega is connected, so what can we conclude from these two? Suppose omega is connected. What do you get from the first point? If you have a connected set, the only open and closed subsets are the empty set and the whole set. So, if you assume that omega is connected, the first set is uh, either empty or it is a whole thing, right? So, what does it mean? If the set is non-empty, then it is a whole thing. The set is non-empty means what? At some point Z naught, all the derivatives are zero. Then the conclusion is all the der derivatives are zero at every point, right? If What does this mean? The function is a constant, right? If you look at power series out any point, the coefficients are all given in terms of the derivatives, right? If you have then a n is something like that, okay? So, if all these are 0, only the constant term a 0 survives, right? So, the function therefore reduces to a constant. What is the conclusion in the second case? Omega is the whole thing if it is not empty. So that means at every point z, f z is equal to f of z naught, which means again that f is a constant, right? So, for a non-constant function, for example, in a connected domain, not all derivatives can vanish. So, let us look at uh, now uh, 
possible sets of points where the function can vanish. But before that, probably let me, uh, let's prove extra theorem for that. I mean, it's going to be a consequence of the Morira theorem, so let's finish that. See, you, you know, uh, in, in real case, real analysis, we have a sequence of uh, continuous functions which converges locally uniformly, uniformly on every compact interval, then the limit function is also continuous. Right, but this is not true for differentiability. For differentiability, you need uh, uniform convergence for the derived differentiated sequence, okay. But in the complex case, you do not need this additional, just uniform convergence will give you differentiability for the limit function also. In other words, uniform limits of analytic functions are analytic. This is the Weierstrass theorem. Because in complex function theory, there are so many theorems called Weierstrass theorem. So, specify what theorem that we are talking about. If a sequence Fn of analytic functions beta converges Locally uniformly means uniformly on compact subsets or equivalently uniformly on closed disk inside omega. To function f, then f is analytic. In other words, local uniform limits of analytic functions are analytic. Moreover, the differentiated sequence that is fn prime also converges locally uniformly to f prime. Once you say that f is analytic, f prime exists and we can say that fn prime converges locally uniformly to f prime and of course you can keep differentiating. All the derivatives exist and the, the kth derivative of fn converges to the kth derivative of f, every k. Because once you know that f is analytic, we know that all derivatives exist. So. First statement is immediate from Morigas here. You want to say that f is analytic, okay? So by Morigas theorem, it's enough to show that integral along any triangle is zero. But integral of f along a triangle is limit of integral f n along the triangle because of uniform convergence. 
but F1 is all analytic and therefore those the integral Fn over the triangles are all zero. So that's all. Okay. So that the interior also Because of uniform convergence, we can integrate because of the uniform convergence on the on the triangle. So, this is by Cauchy's theorem for a triangle. And therefore, So now just invoke Morira's theorem to So that's all, there's nothing immediate from Morira's theorem. But you can also see this directly without appealing to Morira's theorem if you use uh, the integral formula. The advantage in the second proof is that uh, you can use it for the derivatives also. So this proof cannot be used to get these, the second statement here. And this convergence of this. Okay, so for any zeta in omega, you look at the, the Cauchy integral formula in a suitable disk around zeta, f of zeta is 1 over 2 pi i integral over whatever c zeta r. Right? For a suitable circle around zeta, I mean, not, not this, for Fn's, we have to show that F is analytic, right? So, this doesn't hold for F to start with. So, 
ये चैन नाउ यू कैन टेक द लिमिट वट यू गेट ऑन द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड यू आर गोइंग टू गेट एफ ऑफ जीटा ऑन द राइट हैंड साइड यू आर गोइंग टू गेट द सेम थिंग विथ एफ इन प्लेस ऑफ एफ एम अगेन यू कैन इंटरग्रेट बिकॉज ऑफ यूनिफॉर्म कन्वर्जेंस सो टेकिंग लिमिट्स get how do you conclude from this that f is analytic what did you yesterday starting from the cauchy formula we got the power series expansion by writing this suitably so on. so you can start with this integral there and get the power series expansion for f and so conclude that f is analytic now disk inside any disk in omega so in the whole of omega so this remark that i wanted to make uh, but i forgot when we proved that result starting from the cauchy formula to conclude analyticity what we had was this right and then from this we got the power series all that was needed was the analyticity of f so to define of f of zeta as i mean one over 2 pi a is not necessary i mean for analyticity right if you have a function like this where phi is an analytic function then you can do the same thing whatever we did starting from the cauchy formula except that the difference here is instead of f the function f you have a function phi in other words start with a function which is analytic phi and define f by this integral whenever it makes sense then f is analytic okay in other words the cauchy integral of any analytic function gives you an analytic function So if phi is analytic, and we define f by this, then f is of course we have to make lots of qualifications for a suitable C, etc., etc. So phi is analytic in the neighborhood of So anyway, so from this we can conclude that f is analytic. So this now whatever we did for the function f here the sequence of fn and for f you can do for the derivatives you can look at fn k you have the integral there take the limit so for any k
Right? This is the formula for the derivative, right? The kth derivative and so the by taking limits K factorial somewhere. K factorial here. Okay. So the kth derivative of fn converges to kth derivative of f. This is no problem. But how do you get any form convergence in compact sets? That I am not going to write out, but will tell you. Okay. So what you have to do is you look at instead of writing uh, this taking limit you get this you take the difference okay So saying that by uniform convergence, take the limit, we actually estimate the difference. Take modulus, take modulus here and write down an estimate on a suitable disk, you will therefore get uniform convergence. So if you get uniform convergence on every disk, you get local uniform. So estimating, I will just write the right side. I can get uniform convergence on every disk. Which is same as local uniform. All efforts. Suppose Z0 is a 0 for F. That means F of Z0 is 0. So if you look at the power series expansion around Z0, so in a disk. On Z naught, F of Z is F of Z naught, or so F of Z naught is what?
So the constant term in the power series is 0. Look at a1, next coefficient, it may be 0, it may not be 0. a1 is not 0. Z0 is called a simple 0 or 0 of order 1. So you can keep, if a1 is also 0, look at the next one. So you can look at the smallest k for which a k is not 0. So in general, suppose So that means, so a0, etc. up to a k minus 1 are all 0 and a k is not 0. a k is the first non-zero a n. Hmm. Then you say that uh, it is a zero of order k. So what happens, how does the power series look like in that case? Fz is sigma an right all the earlier terms are all so the first term is uh, the kth power a k z minus z naught to the k so it starts the kth power so we can pull that out and write this as z minus z naught k to a n n minus k correct huh? So what about this factor here? That's a power series, right? And therefore, gives you an analytic function in that disk. So call it dz. gz is given by this power series where gz analytic in that disk of course and what is the value at z naught it's a k right which by assumption is not zero so g of uh, G is analytic and G at Z0 is non-zero. Mm. 
So if you have a continuous function which is non-zero at some point, then in some neighborhood of that point, the function is non-zero. G does not vanish in a neighborhood of Z. the derivative up to k vanish at z naught, k derivative does not vanish. The k derivative is in terms of k. So this k saying that z naught is a zero model k is equivalent to saying all the derivatives up to order k, up to order k minus 1, up to 0 and go down. But the k point is not. So all this under the assumption that k is equal to 0, k1 is 0, a k minus 1 is 0, but a k is not 0. So there is a sum a n for which a n is not zero. We are taking the smallest such k. Suppose there is no such k. Meaning what? Suppose all the derivatives at z naught are zero. That is, f n. Some point where this holds, then it holds it there. So, in other words, if you are looking at a connected domain, such a thing does not happen. Right? Unless the function is enhanced. Right? If omega is connected, okay, and f is not a constant. Not happen that f n zero for every n. Right? There has to be some k. In, this. Right? in other words, uh, f n c uh, up k minus one it is zero and at k it is non zero. So you call it as a zero model k. So this zero for every k, every n then 
infinity road, what you can call as a zero infinite order. Okay. The, what we said just now says that in a connected domain, there is no such thing. Zeros of infinite order do not exist. Okay. So if omega is connected, F is a zero function. So in that case, of course, everything is of infinite. So Z0 is zero of order k. F of Z is Z minus Z0 to the k times the function g, where g at Z0 does not vanish, and therefore g does not vanish in a neighborhood of Z0. Which means, so what is the conclusion about F in that neighborhood? So G does not vanish for any Z not equal to Z not in a neighborhood. So, what does that say about F? F also does not vanish at any other point, any point other than Z0, right? In that neighborhood, in some neighborhood of Z0, where G has no zero, and therefore, F has no zero other than Z0. Z0 is the only zero of F in that neighborhood. So, so what do you say in this case? The topological term point zero is isolated. Right? There is no other zero in a neighborhood. So, the conclusion of this statement can be expressed by saying that the zeros of an analytic function are isolated points. So, F has so, um, the neighborhood something. N of that naught. So G of Z naught is not equal to zero. G of Z is not uh, does not vanish in the neighborhood N of Z naught, and therefore F has no zero. Other than Z naught in N. So, in other words,
So, the set of zeros of an analytic function is an isolated set of points. But this set has to be found. Hmm? So the enough three rules is the countable distance. Countable means it can be empty or finite. Or countable. So the countable can be empty. The exponential function has no zero. The whole set is empty. The exponential function has no zero. What about sign Z? Where does the sign go? Exactly, and because something. Zero point. Zero point. 